Hi, how are you doing today? My name is ChewyD23. So if you guys can probably imagine from the various music videos I've been posting and the descriptions I write about them, I I like music. I don't know if that's ever come up at, at any point. But I think the thing about music that I really, really like is the lyricism behind it. Maybe not lyricism, the emotional components behind it. Like how a song makes you feel or how a song, like the theatrics that can be pulled out of a song. That's the stuff that I truly value. Not necessarily how the song in of itself is constructed. I wouldn't know a double bass drum from, from any other drumming style. I wouldn't know drop C if I heard it on its own. Or I wouldn't know necessarily going from like the one chord to the five chord and what does that mean. Not that that stuff isn't interesting. It's knowledge. All knowledge is interesting. It's not the part of music that I resonate with. It's not a part of music that I value. The thing that I enjoy is the images and the imagery that gets created by the song in and of itself. Which I think is shown in the descriptions on the music videos. But I wanted to try maybe doing it face to face. Not because it's like the... Wednesday before and I have no other right. This <clears throat> So the song, as you probably can guess, is a Coheed and Cambria song, as I I there is off screen there is an IV of Coheed and Cambria. I, I, it's it's that boombox right there. That's the IV. The reason why I love Coheed and Cambria so much is that right now they're the band that's doing this idea the best, you know, this idea of from one set of lyrics and from one way of playing it, here's a whole bunch of ideas. And there's so much that can go on of just of this one song called Gravity's Union. First, a little bit of background. So at one point in time, there used to be this thing called the Heaven's Fence, which was a collection of 78 planets housed between seven different stars. These 78 planets were situated between the seven stars. It's kind of like a triangle. Now, if you have a passing idea of the concept of gravity, you would understandably question how this works. But that's okay, because there is this thing called the keyword that magically somehow held all the planets together. Except no one really knew how the key work was doing this. I mean, obviously the ideas of gravity and all the other concepts are destroyed, but in this world, even curiosity and some scientific ideas cannot help but slip through. So there was a scientist, his name was Cyrus Amory, and he decided to go exploring in the key work. Now, it didn't really matter to Cyrus that several others had attempted to study the key work and none survived, and he had a wife who he was ostensibly leaving behind while he went and died? Question mark? No one knew what happened. <laughs> These other scientists never came back. But pride is a hell of a drug. And Cyrus decided that he wanted to be the first to discover what is the key work. So he decided to take the plunge, if you will, and go exploring. And he managed to discover what was there. The souls of the dead. Or, I guess in some ways, the souls of the damned. Cyrus was possessed by at least three different entities. These spirits symbolize several negative concepts. Destitution. Insanity. Butchery. Consumed by these entities and their negative emotions, Cyrus almost died. And in his last moments, he couldn't help but think of the beautiful woman he had left behind. For his pride and vanity but eventually he was saved by the faithful one entity who escaped the dreary world of the damned and through a final entity he was able to escape but time had passed over a year in fact but that time difference didn't matter to cyrus he had to return he had to return to his love but she had moved on. No one had survived the key work. How was she to know that he would return? Especially since she had found another man. One who could arguably save her. In multiple definitions of that word. So when Cyrus met up with her again, after being lauded and celebrated... For his discovery, he realized that the one thing that he desired couldn't come back to him. And that's what this song attempts to explain, to symbolize. That 
is the gravity's union. First, at the beginning of the song, and you hear that da 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 da. Yeah, d- yeah, yeah. I, I'm a hooker for for stuff like that. I I know I know what I like in my music, and and if if it's dark and heavy, I'm gonna like it very much. Okay, okay. I don't really have much to say about the beginning of the song. Not that they don't have anything. This idea of of lights and of engines, you know, in in the story, it's this idea that Cyrus has a car crash, right? But I think in many ways also it's it's this racing of time catching up to him. He's been gone for for such a long time, and now reality is just rushing up to him. Sure, you had these experiences. But they don't matter anymore. We've had our own experiences. It's also worth noting that that saddle up and, and steed part. It, it's very interesting, this contrast between this modern piece of technology he's driving in and this truck that he runs into. But this imagery of a horse now, of this more primitive, anti-scientific, anti-progress version of it. It's interesting to think of it as someone who graduated from an engineering program, how damaged you are about science because what it has taken from you, someone who wants to go into the key work as a scientist, is now kind of stripping away all of that science and in many ways wants to go back to this horse and carriage because I didn't lose somebody from it in multiple different ways of that phrase. Also, the emotion in this chorus of, and I was wrong to let you know, I accept my mistake, but you will never know in the 10 ton truck and this pleading it is so electrifying because it's the emotion of i have made the greatest mistake and i can't take it back i I think even those of us who haven't killed anybody can still really resonate with that fact and that pleading please remember the better me not whatever me i was then but a better one And this part right here, contact the life you used to know. And I love the echoing nature of it. It's like the souls of the key work are calling out to him. Like, yeah, go, yes, go and contact her. Go and contact this life you used to know. But we know through our omnipotence of being the dead. We know you can't do that. You can't go back anymore. <laughs> I really love this little play on words here in, in in the bridge. Numbered uncertainty, city limits. In those two lines, numbered city. To, to the previous song before this was called Number City. I think it's cute, that little callback. So here's something interesting. It's this line here, I am your, I am your prize. There's a funny little pun here. Here's the thing, on the lyrics website I'm looking at now, they stylize that as capital P-R-I-S-E. Why? That is the name of a race within this universe. See, the prize in this world are supposedly the angels. They protect the key work from threats. They make sure that all the planets stay in this triangle. They stay binded. They have angelic wings. And I think it's worth pointing out that pun. Because when we think of angels, we think of the messengers of, of God, messengers from the land of the dead. And that is arguably what Cyrus is doing here. He came from the land of the dead and in some ways now taking his wife there. But the lyrics in the booklet spell it lowercase p-r-i-s-e. And I can't help but wonder how Cyrus felt at that moment. Because when I sing it, I just feel... All of this deep, deep self-loathing. I am what you get. How great, how lucky are you? You're stuck with me. Especially with all that emotion beforehand. All my loving heart spilled in this car. Picture me, the perfect enemy. This blood and emotion just spilling. Everything's being left on the table and you're left with me. Oh boy, Mm, I love it so much. Now this next part, I know what it's said, I know what's written, but I can't help but listen to it slightly differently. I hear 
we we welcome a boy we we welcome a boy because to me that's what i think cyrus hears at the end this is the reason why he crashes the car they're welcoming a boy they've moved beyond you they decided to make love not have sex i want that wording to be clear they made love they made new life because you had to make discovery sucks to suck i guess also i really can't help with this moment think of it from a stage perspective like how would i actually put this on a stage and i love the imagery of of having wife and behind of this musical saying that line and then cyrus standing center stage microphone in hand looking right at the audience in my eyes i drowned you and then the lights come down and the entities return the three entities that he saw before come in to remind him who exactly he is. He has forgotten his place. Again, seeing this from a stage perspective, to have those three entities return, have all of them sing at once, and then they select one of them. As in many ways, a god controlling the key work. And I can see all three of them really being the entity that returned. The butcher living out his fantasies, carving up Cyrus or the cracked with her deranged focus on destroying him or the destitute leaving Cyrus with nothing. I can see this guy. No cause for alarm. Enter the master. I am Dr. Straight. Oh, I'm having so much fun here. I get to play with you. Like, you are not okay. Like a Darth Sidious, Dr. Frankenstein, or, or Iago, Dr. Frankenstein. They are evil. They were never good. Oh, and speaking of on plays, this bridge, every man has a point where he breaks or conjoins. And that work, it is so beautifully describing Dr. Strait and the entities playing through Cyrus as he comes to realize what has happened and that spiraling down like the fisheye lens so moving in and zooming in at one shot of his brain just everything that he knew coming down to the point where he questions choice do we love do we hate what does it matter we are only the meat we're only flesh at best. A thing that I find interesting though is I don't think Cyrus gets it yet because I accept my mistake but you will never know. But then later on it says how they stole our love. It's that they. There's two ways to view this I suppose. I suppose that they in some ways represents the old him but that old him is not what killed him. It's the new him. The him that accepted his mistake stole his love. In many ways, more so. So what mistakes has he accepted? Has he accepted all of his mistakes? I don't think he has. Because they stole them. Not we stole them. Or I stole them. They stole them. Oh god, this line. Caged, locked in perpetual motion. I can see th th this emotion. I, I don't think when he's saying carving her wounds right open, I don't think he even's referring to weapons. I see it taking his fingernails like a requiem for a dream, bad drug cr crawling through my skin. I understand that, oh, it's Linkin Park. You know, the, like the, the meme that's become around it, but no, 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 like this, like crawling through the skin is in reference to drugs and the feeling and the thought of bugs crawling through your skin, only it's not heroin, it's grief, unabashed grief, and he, like he's going to rip off the skin to let it out. That's what this outro sounds like. My mouth is insufficient, I need to scream through my arms. I have no mouth, but I must scream. I have a mouth and it is insufficient. And after every single line he repeats this, that laughter. Ha 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 ha. The damned don't care. They are the damned. They love this. They get so much joy out of this. Because now you, 
are one of them. But I wish, I wish I knew what was being said alongside. Because they're saying something. The damned are saying something. I think I hear, we let you down. Which I think adds to this idea that Cyrus off the wrong thing. And now they are unabashedly, joyously attacking him for it. I've never lost the love, but God can I feel through this song what that might be like? Here's what I can sympathize with. I know what it feels like the world is against you. That no matter what you do, there is no hope. You can make one wrong move and a decade of your life just gone. I am caged, locked in perpetual motion. I am Carving wounds wrong open. But you, world, you, me, you made a mistake. This is an amazing song. And truthfully, there are other ones I prefer <laughs> off the same album. But this is still, I this one's really great. I, I really like it. So that's my perspective on Gravity's Union. Hopefully I didn't make you feel uncomfortable. I'm sorry. If I did, I'm sorry. It's, I think it's a great song. I really, really recommend you guys give a listen to it. What do you guys think about when you're listening to the song? As you hear all these parts, let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested. If you guys want to see more of this, again, comment box below, please. I'd love to know more. Anyway, that's it for me. See you guys in three weeks. Peace.